Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a different way that we can have our player fire a bullet here. So traditionally, what happens when we fire our gun, a bullet comes out of our gun and then travels in a direction until it hits something or goes off the screen. What we're going to be learning in this lesson is how we can use something called ray tracing and basically shoot an ray, sorry, shoot an uh, ray out of the gun and then instantly decide whether we've hit something such as this metal statue or if we've hit something like a box or a barrel or just we've gone off the screen and nothing happens. So this is what we're going to be learning in today's lesson. So let me switch to an unfinished project and let's get started. Now I have the unfinished project here. I'm not going to go over this as you may recognize this from the previous tutorial that we just finished, but I'm going to open up our object character here and I'm going to go to the step event and in this step event, I have blanked out everything underneath the flash. So this is where before we were shooting a bullet out of the gun and then having it travel. Now, before we actually get into this, I'm going to make sure that for this player, I'm going to go into my room and open up my player, zoom in because I definitely can't read that. Go to debug and make sure it's true. Now, I have this little piece of code in my draw event to shoot a ray out of my character. And what I'm doing is I'm using the X and Y position of my character, and then I'm shooting a ray towards the X and Y position of my mouse. And then I'm just adding the length of the maximum ray length to the X position and the Y position. Now, what is this variable? If we take a look at it in the create event, it's just a extremely big number that I've made up. So you could do something like the screen width or you could just use a big number like 3000. 3000 for me will cover my entire screen left and right up and down. So with the bug on you can see that I have this green line being shot out all the time and no matter where I am in my game world uh, the line is going off the screen. So using this method here, we're able to fire a ray up the exact same line and decide whether or not we've collided it with an object such as the metal statue or if we've collided it with the barrels. So right now we're not colliding because this is an unfinished project, but let's work on that. Let's close it and let's go back into our room and make sure our player, the variable for debug is set to false. We don't want to be showing that while we're doing the code here. Now in the step event, we have a shooting region and if the mouse button left is clicked and we're able to shoot, meaning we have enough bullets and our state and everything like that, we're gonna have the flash effect, which is actually the um, pew effect here. And right here we need to fire out a ray. So what we are going to be using is kind of the same thing we did in the draw event. Let's type that out. So I'm going to use or I'm going to reuse XX and YY so I don't have to redeclare them. So I could say XX equals our character position plus the length der X function. And we're going to be using the maximum ray length and our image angle. So what we're doing here is we're just grabbing our player's position and shooting a ray all the way to the left or sorry all the way to the right or all the way to the left depending on which way we're facing we're going to copy this and we are going to do the exact same thing but we're going to use the y variable and length dir y so this will give us that that green line that was following our mouse cursor the next thing we need to do is we need to generate or we should say we need to have a list of objects that we're colliding with with our ray and what we're going to be using is collision line and we want collision line list if we check out the help function here uh, it will return an, a, an array or sorry a ds list of all of the instances that we've collided with the nice thing about this is we can order the list and say we say the order is going to be true, then the first item in this last list is going to be the closest item that we hit. So we can use this function to pretty much do everything that we want. So actually, let me bring the help back up because down here at the bottom, they have a really good example. I highly checked, sorry, I highly recommend you check that out. Um, let's close this. And what we're going to do is first create a DS list. So we'll say underscore 
sorry, var underscore list equals ds list, and we want create. Once we've created that list, we need to store the number of collisions that we're going to have. So var underscore num equals, and we're going to be using the function collision line list. And it takes the X position of our character, the Y position, and then where we want to shoot that ray. So we're using X, X, and we're using Y, Y. And now it says, what do we want to collide with? Well, in my objects, I have collisions here. The object hittable is a parent, and inside I have the statue, the barrel, and the table. So instead of checking for all three, I'm just going to check for the object hittable. So back in our code, I'll say check for the object hittable. I do not need to be precise. And let's say, let's exclude us from this function just so we cannot be hit ourselves. Store everything in our DS list. And we, yes, we want it to be ordered, meaning that the first item in that list is going to be the first collision that happens. Now, the next thing we need to do is check to see if we have any collisions. So we can say if underscore num is bigger than zero. So this means that we have hit something. Now I'm just going to use a, I'm going to create a instance variable and assign it to the list. And I'm going to grab the first item in that list. So all we're doing is assigning, instead of writing this out all the time, we're just going to be able to write instance, just a little shortcut here. What this allows us to do is uh, say we had some hit state or something on our instance. We could say instance dot state equals object. Um, let's see, object states dot hit. So I don't have this in this code, but that's something that you could do. I'm just going to remove it for now and carry on. Now that we've known that we've hit something, what we need to do, and actually let me load my player back up, is once we've hit something, I'm going to hit play here. The only thing that we need to do is you can see our line is going like this. If we collide, say, on this angle, we want the collision to happen along this line. We don't want to use the X and Y position, or sorry, the origin of the statue or the origin of the barrels or origin of the boxes what we want to have happen is the actual x and y collision that's where we want to spawn the effects such as a bullet mark or let's say sparks or wood chips so let's figure out how to do that first let's take off our debug and switch back to our code so we know that we've hit something so our number is bigger than zero and we know that we're grabbing the first instance now we have to travel up the ray that we've shot and we're going to look for when we hit it. So we can do var found equals false. And once again, let's use the x, x and y, y variables. We'll just reset them to our player. So this will be in the origin of our player. And now we could say while not found. So we want to be careful here because what we're going to do is we're going to be traveling up our ray. We should always find something, but this right here is generating an infinite loop. If it doesn't break out, then our game is pretty much going to crash. Our player won't be able to do anything. So if you're ever doing something like a while statement and you forget to set the variable, you always need to make sure that you have multiple ways that they can get out. And we'll cover that in just a second. So we'll say while found, or sorry, while not found, so found equals false. Then the x, x position is going to be plus equal the length dir x function and i'm just going to move it one pixel based off of the image angle or whatever way we're facing and i will do the same for the y position so we are just moving one pixel either left or right and one pixel up or down throughout that ray until well until found is going to be equal to true so how we determine that is we can use another collision function we could use collision underscore point so collision point is going to accept our x, x position, our y, y position, and then the object that it's checking for, which is object underscore hittable. Next, we don't need it to be precise and we don't need to include ourselves. And I think I did that right. It looks right here. Okay. So once we've decided that the collision point is with inside our object hittable. Then we could say found equals true. 
and we might as well just break out of this while statement. We could actually leave the break out here as it doesn't really matter, but let's leave it in just for coding standards. The next thing we need to do is make sure that if we never hit uh, object hittable, even though we should, we need a way to break out of this. So let's pretend our array goes off the screen. So we need a way to easily break out of this while statement so our game doesn't crash. We can say if the xx is less than zero or the xx is bigger than the room width, then, well, let's break out. And we'll do the same for y. So we'll say yy is less than zero or yy is greater than room height, then break out as well. So we're just breaking out of this while statement just in case something goes wrong. Now, all we have to do underneath our while statement is we could say if found, so if we found the item we were hitting, let's create the bullet mark. So we'll say instance create layer, and we want to create it at the x, x, and y position, and then the effects layer, and we want to use object underscore, I believe it's effect mark. Now, if I run this, this should work. However, we're just going to have one minor problem, and I'll show it to you in just a second here. Now, we should be able to move around. Let's reload our gun. Let's hit our statue, and you can see where our gun is colliding. It is indeed generating those items however the one part or sorry the one problem is that it's generating it right here on the edge and it's the same with the statue so all i want to do is move it in a tiny bit and i can do that with the length dare x function and i want to move it in say 16 pixels and i want to use the way that we're facing so image angle and i will copy this and put it on the y and then use it length there y so all this is doing is it's moving a a little bit in on the object just to give it a little bit more of effect of being hit so you can see it's no longer right on the side it's kind of put into the object so that looks nice so you can see that we're already we have some hit being detected here and everything is looking good however the one thing we're going to run into is if we the longer we run this game the more memory we're going to use up and that's because we are using a DS list and we created one here at the top. However, we never did anything to get rid of it. So let's go all the way down to, let's see here. Let's go down to here and say DS underscore list and we want destroy and then paste in our variable. Now, the only other thing we need to do is create those effects and we can do that inside the found. Now, checking out the object hittable, down here, underneath variable definitions, you can see that I have a type. The default is metal, and the type is list. And if I check out the options, we have metal and wood, and these are just strings. So inside the statue, I've set the type to metal. Inside the barrel, the type is set to wood. And the same goes for the table. The type will be set to wood as well. So we can use this variable here to determine what effect we need to show. So let me just close those and go back to our code in our player. So we we know that we've found an instance and we're able to collide with it. We could say switch instance.type. And because we are always checking for an object hittable, we know that this variable is always going to, it's going to be inner object because it's in the parent so it doesn't matter if it's a table statue or barrel we can get away with doing this because it's very safe so once we're going to determine what kind of type it is so it could be either wood or it could be metal make sure we spell those right so let's say we're doing wood well let's repeat a i random range so well, we're going to have one to four effects here. So one to four particles, I should say. And with these particles, let's just generate a random X and Y position. So once again, we'll just use var random X equals I random range. And we'll say minus 50 to 50. And let's do the same with Y. And just give me a second and we'll talk about those two variables. Now we have to declare an instance for the effect, so let's actually call it effect. We'll say instance underscore create layer. 
and we want it to happen at the xx position, which is the position that we collided at, plus the random x value. So it's so either going to be the x position minus 50 or x position plus 50 or any number in between there. So we're going to collide, or so we're going to instantiate on that x position and the random y position and then we want to use the effects layer and we're going to use object underscore effect this is the wood so we're going to use object effect wood now the reason that we're storing this effect in the variable is so that we can access the properties later such as we need to give it a direction and because we're using the because we're on the wood particles I want the wood particles say if I hit a box pointing to the right I want the wood particles to continue in that direction so we're going to set the effect direction equal image angle so whatever way we're pointing at it will continue and then the effect speed I will say I random range 4 to 8 and I think that's pretty much it let's check out the effect here just so we can make sure the effect is wood and in the create event we have a fade out speed and once it fades out it destroys itself so that's that's all we need so if we hit wood it should create an effect and the effect should travel with our bullet let's try and hit these boxes and you can see that the wood particles are continuing on in the direction that we've hit the object now when I hit the statue here, nothing happens because we haven't coded it, but what I want to happen is sparks fly the opposite direction that we hit it. So if I'm hitting it on this side, I want the sparks to go towards the player. And that's very simple to do. All we have to do is copy our repeat statement here because we're using pretty much the same stuff. Uh, what we need to do is change the effect instead of wood to be F object effect metal and the direction right here is what we need to change so we need it to go the opposite direction so all we need to do is take the current way that we're facing and add 180 degrees and that's it now if we run our game we should be able to hit the statue and have those effects come towards our player and I'll move around a little bit here so you can see that it's happening even up top and when we hit some wooden objects the effects such as the bullet traveling through will carry forward and that brings this tutorial to an end thanks for watching a special shout out to those such as Paul Wayne JG Os1 and as well as the anonymous supporters on patreon I hope you learned a thing or two and see you in the next video